go. OJ here. Welcome to the late, better late than never, Player Essence Cross Nintendo podcast. I'll keep it a buck with you guys. I've had a rough week and I was asleep for a bit. And for some reason, I forgot to turn on my alarm just because I had the craziest like headache and toothache today. Like it was nuts. Uh, so I was like, all right, let me just take a nap. That was like at 12 o'clock. That was at 12 o'clock. And then all of a sudden it was four o'clock before I even knew it. It was four o'clock. Um, and my, <laughs> my wife was watching TV. She did not come wake me. So, uh, but here we are. We are here at it again. Uh, welcome to the Players' Since Cross Nintendo podcast. Hopefully you guys are all having a great day. My name is OJ. I've got my co-host Stealth here with me as well. Stealth, how are you doing this fine Friday, late Friday evening for you? I'm doing great. I'm sorry to hear about your uh, difficulties, but, you know, hopefully talking about Nintendo will make it a little bit better. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe. We, we will definitely see for sure. We will definitely see for sure. So uh, we've got quite a bit of stuff to go over. Um, so it should be uh, pretty good. It should be pretty good today. Um, and you guys might see a pop-up real quick for... Um, some of you guys might see a pop-up real quick for uh, what's called Microsoft as I get some little bit of small background music for you guys. So if that pops up, you guys will see that just slightly. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and let's jump uh, right into the topics. We're going to start off with Final Fantasy, which is a little bit of a uh, is a little bit of a fire starter here, man. A uh, little bit of a fire starter here. So uh, because it was interesting. So... It, you know, let me just break it down first and foremost. So Final Fantasy 16, the game's out. I know, Stealth, uh, you're playing. I think you said you played 10 straight hours the other day. Yeah, um, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm much farther now. Still afraid to talk about it at all because people are so sensitive about spoilers. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I am i didn't make much more progress. I'm going to make more progress this weekend uh, just because I've just been... My, my voice and just I've just been out of it this week to be honest um and it's just been really hot where I live as well so I just don't really feel like doing anything outside of just editing and then just lying down um and exercising in the morning but um yeah man like Final Fantasy is great like it, it's it's a good game you know it's we, we went over the scores and everything but now we have a little bit of an update with the Japanese sales that came out and when the game sold three million I was like okay cool you know three million I didn't know the split Obviously, the install base was a factor, and I was like, okay, yeah, no problem. And, you know, it seems, you know, okay, seems good compared to what we've got on PS5. But now we got the Japanese sales that came out. So it gave us a little bit more information on the how it did, you know. And one of the big sticking points for many people, and I think for myself too, a lot of people talked about this, was the fact that, okay, well, look, the PS5 just hasn't really been doing i mean no it's it's doing good actually it's doing really good but obviously the 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 what was it the pandemic caused the ps5 to sell less than probably it should be right now it's about 40 million 38 to 40 million units around like so you know it's not gonna sit there and sell 10 million in day one or anything like that or the first so we all understand that however the japanese sales came out and yoshi p worrying about hey look the first week was going to be a little rough he, that was that was that was founded because it was significantly less. It sold three hundred and thirty six thousand units, which is by far the lowest debut for Final Fantasy. Like I, there's spinoffs that have done better, like Type O, Dissidia, and like those those did better. Like a lot. Of this I don't know if it's the lowest because I don't know if you go back to the, the original Final Fantasy. It's not the lowest. Yeah, no, it, it's not the lowest. I think Game Library on, on Twitter put, put out a chart, and it I, 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 it sold less than Final Fantasy VI, but it might have sold more than Final Fantasy IV or V, but it, it's been since the SNES. Yeah, 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 exactly. It's It's been, um, um, it's been, it's, it, it's, it's been a while, essentially. Yeah. And then we also got, like, the install base stuff, right? Like, that's something that I'm like, okay, well, let me look at the install base. And then I researched it, and it's like, well, wait a minute, hold up. The PS4 install base was actually a little bit lower than the PS5 install base, and Final Fantasy 15 did more than double it, you know? Um, so that was some... I think that's where Yoshi P and Square Enix's panicking came through. It's like, well, wait a minute. He, even here in Japan the sales of the PS5 are above the PS4, yet the pre-orders are nowhere near it, just in just domestically in Japan. 
So I think that there's definitely some room to say, okay, well, what's going on there? You know, um, you want to be growing. You, you don't want to be going backwards. You want to be getting more, you know? And if you look at the install base ratio, the PS5 actually, actually has more systems. So I made a video talking about that and the fact that the Final Fantasy 15 boosted hardware more than Final Fantasy 16. So it was an analysis on the sales, just in, just like the topics, not whether I like, you know, the, yeah, the game, the 3 million units, that's, that's good if you compare it to anything else, but we're talking about the standards of Final Fantasy, you know, and especially in Japan. So I calculated the numbers, Stealth, and Final Fantasy, um, Final Fantasy 16 did 30,000 plus more um, system sales, about 30, 34,000 or more, whereas back in 2016, the PS4 got boosted all the way from 42,000 units to 118,000 units. So it cracked 100K, whereas Final Fantasy did it, like, you know, that's usually a system seller. Final Fantasy is always a, you're going to get, you know, six figures on the uh, on the system sales whenever Final Fantasy comes out, you know? Um, but the, the boost here wasn't as big, and the Switch still beat it out on, you know, that just seems to be like that, that hasn't happened I've never remembered a time when Final Fantasy's launched and PlayStation hardware isn't number one in Japan. You know, like I can't even recall, even spinoffs, whatever, like if it's Dissidia, PSP, or Typo, or whatever, like when Typo came out for PS4, like it's PS4 was at the top, you know, like it, it, whenever Final Fantasy launches, it's always, so I was looking at that, I'm like, well, okay, hold up. Well, that's worth talking about a little bit, right? But I guess not, people got upset. So uh, I've been talking a lot still. So I wanna uh, hear your take on this. And maybe if you, you can check me on a couple of things, if you disagree, uh, feel free to let me know. Yeah, I mean, there's there's two ways to look at it. Um, you know, in terms of just PS5 in a vacuum, you know, Final Fantasy 16 did have the biggest launch by a good significant margin of any other PS5 title in Japan. So, you know, in that way, it was good. But, you know, the elephant in the room is that, you know, the, just the dominance of Switch. Um, that's the primary system that everyone has in Japan. That's the system that everyone buys games for. It's just extremely tough for anything that isn't on Switch to, you know break i guess break records or grow in any significant way um you know if we, if we, if we look comparatively you know the the, the 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 biggest launch on p and it's not really comparable um you know the, the biggest launch on ps5 is final fantasy 16 at 330,000 you know the, the biggest launch on switch was like 4 million um you know that 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 uh, obviously switch has more systems but that's also what everyone likes to buy physical games on too um so it's just tough um you know i'm not exactly curious i, I guess when final fantasy 15 came out um 3ds would have been nintendo's primary system still um, 3ds and wii u yeah but we yeah, but was we was already on the way it was on the way out it was yeah, on the way out, yeah. but in japan it was 3ds and, yeah. and even you know, 3DS was popular. It wasn't as popular as Switch, so it it opened the door for for PS4 to move some units when when Final Fantasy 15 came out. Um, but now it, it's just tough. It, it's just it's just tough. Um, you know, and I I would expect you know week two maybe a, like a 50% decrease for for Final Fantasy 16, and then you know maybe a few weeks after that it'll be out of the top 10 entirely. Um, so, you know, it can only do, a game can only do so good on PS5 in Japan. That's just the bottom line. But for as good as it could do, you know, I think Final Fantasy 16 will hold the record for the biggest PS5 launch in Japan for a little while, at least until Monster Hunter launches. Yeah, Monster Hunter. Um, yeah. But, you know, for, 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 for PS5, it was good. But, you know, obviously, if you compare it to other Final Fantasy games, it, it was, it was pretty bad. Yeah, um, but yeah. you know, I don't think I th I think right now people are just not wanting to hear it because you know I think they're enjoying the game. 
Um, yeah. That's just my sense. No, I'm, in, I'm enjoying it too, man. I mean, yeah, that was yeah. a good analysis on your part. Like, I, I think you're right about that. And I probably, I think I probably should have mentioned that. All right, maybe I did mention it in my video. I don't remember. But yeah, that big launch for the, um, a big launch for the, uh, the, the PS5 in Japan. Um, you know, maybe that should have been a little bit more of an emphasis saying, hey, look, for, for PS5, this is fantastic, you know. Um, but at the same time, yeah, like, it's just it's just interesting, uh, for sure. Alvin, thank you for the 26 months with the tune in tier. Um, I appreciate that. Shout out to the new uh, peeps following uh, from Twitch. Appreciate you guys. Luis, David, uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, man, like, I, I agree. I think that overall it was solid, uh, but it was just like there. I think that this creates a need for them to do that that's why I, I use it as an opportunity to talk about how they need to make a at like a new age atb based final fantasy game like i, I have people yeah. telling me oh people don't want to buy that i, I call bs uh, dragon quest sells incredibly well in japan persona sells incredibly well in japan uh pokemon sells incredibly well in japan with the turn base like people are saying nobody wants to play turn base anymore japan i, I call bs on that um, you know, people love Honkai, Star Rail. That's a turn-based RPG. Like, I, I, I call BS on, on anybody saying yeah. that people don't want to play turn-based anymore um, or anything like that. I think that's where my disagreement lies. Like, I, that's fine. We can disagree over, you know, the whether you think the 3 million is good or not. And that's fine. You know, I, I think that it's solid. But I think that there's an opportunity for them to be bigger. Like, Final Fantasy isn't growing like very... It's not growing like... like Monster Hunter has exploded, right? Monster Hunter, Final Fantasy used to be a million times bigger than Monster Hunter. Uh, Persona was nowhere near Final Fantasy in size. Like, all these other games are, like, growing and getting bigger. Um, even Dragon Quest has expanded even more. Um, but Final Fantasy, it looks like it's not quite up there, right? Maybe that's due to them wanting to be exclusive. Or, but, like, if you look at it, once again, even if you look at, like, the, like I said, like, the, the install base in Japan, there is a huge drop between 15 and 16. There is, like, and that's no, throw away install base. The install bases are about even. So, that's where I was coming yeah. from, you know, was, like, there's a, there's a massive drop there. And, I mean, there, something would need to be to address that, right? Wouldn't you want to have something, like I said, to, to address that? Um, I don't know. Capcom, they made Monster Hunter Rise. They sold 10 million units on the Switch alone plus another 3 million on Xbox, PlayStation, and PC. They sold 6 million units of um, of Sunbreak. Uh, so, I <laughs> com combined, that's 19 million, and that game was built for the Switch, right? And then it was ported to other systems. So they sold 19 million units of a, of a Switch game, essentially, right? And all I said was that maybe they should try something like that. <laughs> They yeah. sold 19 million units of a Switch game, so I mean that's literally like um like a it's a billion dollar franchise pretty much if you include merchandise and the popularity and all the other stuff that comes with selling 19 million of any one singular thing, you know. Um, so I don't know, but some people say no, they want to just focus on graphics and focus on what that what they need to do. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah, um, I mean, and it was clear that when it came to that 3 million launch like it, it's very heavily skewed toward the US um yes you know that skewed. 3 million because you know I, I we we heard that you know the UK sales were significantly down from you know Final Fantasy 15 um and you know obviously it's an RPG but it's more toward the action game kind of side of things yeah um, which, you know, appeals to Western audiences more, I would say. Um, so it definitely seems like the U.S. is, is carrying Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy 16 a bit. Yeah, absolutely. It's a great game, too. U.S. is definitely carrying because if you look at it, 3 million, maybe you add at best 100, maybe 100,000 for digital sales in Japan. So that would be 400,000 out of that. So that would be, you know, 2.2 point, 2 point uh, uh, yeah, 2.6 million outside of the u.s so absolutely you know um but yeah it's all good um it's all good we'll see exactly how it does you know going forward i think they said something like the game took seven years to develop by like going all the way back to its roots so i mean if a game takes seven years to develop i mean you would I, i'm not them but i i think i would want like <laughs> Like, I think I would want the game to sell like 10 million plus. Like, like, like I'd want it to sell well more than that, right? I mean, if you take seven years to develop and you're at the highest end of the budget, pretty, I'm pretty sure this is the most expensive, one of the most expensive Final Fantasy games to develop. Maybe not more than 15. I, I don't know because that was like took 10 years to develop. Um, 
So, yeah, we'll see though. Uh, we, we, we will see. We will see. So, that's that. Um, we're going to go ahead and move on to the next uh, topic here, guys. And that is what we think Bobby Kotick said, but he didn't actually say with the with the Nintendo Switch 2. Um, there was a, there's articles. Actually, there's still people who are spreading this. And it really hasn't um, been, uh, been updated by a lot of places. But they're saying that uh, I read an article um, on Nintendo Everything. And then they ended up deleting it. And it said that. Bobby Kotick says that Switch 2 is like PS4 and Xbox One in power. So then I'm thinking, oh, okay, he said that. So then I go to the article and I go to his quotes and he doesn't say that at all. <laughs> yeah, can, I, I, think, I think I might be guilty of, of tweeting that too. No, it's um, okay. The way that the yeah. way that people reported on it was that. Uh, so, so let me go over his quotes um, first. So it says, it, so the whole Activision C thing, Activision Xbox court case is going on and all sorts of, I mean, we got leaks of, <laughs> we got leaks of games. We've got all sorts of uh, backdoor dealings. We've got some shady stuff going on. We've got some lying, crying, hiding Jim Ryan. We've got all sorts of stuff. This is a, this is a bonanza right now at this point. But uh, Bobby Kotick, who might be the slimiest executive that that we've seen in quite some time, uh, he is a slimy dude. I, I would not believe anything that he says. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Bobby Kotick, who is the current uh, Activision Blizzard uh, CEO, um, he essentially said this. He said the Nintendo Switch successor, he said, uh, um, given its closer alignment to the 8th generation hardware, um, um, and our previous offerings on PS4 and Xbox One, it's reasonable to assume we can make something compelling for the next generation Switch as well. So he just was speculating. He just said, given it's this, um, when they kind of asked him again, what's going on? Like, are you going to do it? Or he said, well, we need to see the specs. We don't have the specs. So he clearly doesn't know the specs or anything. He was just assuming based off of the Switch and where the power is there, what they're going to do next. I mean, I don't think he thinks that they're going to jump from Switch all the way to PS5, right? So he was just... He was just guessing. Uh, he doesn't know because he clearly said that he doesn't know right after that. And they don't have anything planned right now, neither. There is no Switch Call of Duty sitting in a lab on next gen. There. There's nothing. They don't have anything there. Um, so uh, so it was it was interesting. It was interesting. So what are your thoughts? We'll do a hypothetical if that's the case, if actually what's happening. But what are your first thoughts on this? Then we'll talk about hypothetically. Yeah, I mean, the way that this was presented is originally was Bobby Kotick spoke to Nintendo and this is what they told him which I guess clearly was not the case um, you know obviously I mean you could probably have a portable PS5 but it would cost as much as a Steam Deck or more the battery life would be terrible um, so it's, it's just not going to be that high, but you know, I think most people assume it'll, it, it probably should be at like at least PS4 level to keep getting ports. Um, but yeah, that, that, that this whole Xbox trial has, you know, there's been a lot of things that have been reported that aren't necessarily, you know, I guess the truth or really matter all that much. Um, because a lot of it happened like th three years ago. Um, so it's not super relevant, but yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I wouldn't, I, I don't think there's, there's, there's like a next gen call of duty just sitting there waiting for like an announcement. Um, but yeah, I, I do think that the other thing that he said was more interesting, which was that he whiffed on the switch success. He didn't realize it was going to be, he didn't realize it was going to be as much of a success as it was. Um, which I think a lot of developers can say, uh, particularly in Japan, they weren't exactly ready for it. Um, so I think when a, when a successor does happen, a lot more developers are going to be on board right from the start. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah, yeah, I think so. I think the fact that it was successful, like the Switch was successful, people, regardless of the power or whatever, they're going to try to put something together just because you know, they want to be there this time and just in case things blow up. I still don't trust Bobby Kotek. I don't know what's going to happen with Call yeah. of Duty and all of that. But at the same time, I mean, yeah, like hypothetically, if the Switch was the power of 
uh, PS4, Xbox One, which I have an issue with that just in general because PS4 and Xbox One are, are, are there's a there's a power gap between just those two systems, so there is a bit of a power gap that that's somewhat noticeable for core gamers. Like if you looked at like PS4 games and Xbox One games and like the resolution and some of the stuff that happened, like frame rates and stuff, PS4 definitely was a bit better at the beginning. Um, so uh, even right there, it's like okay, well those two aren't the same completely. No, they're closer than obviously than like what the Wii U was to the PS4, Xbox One, or obviously, you know, whatever. But at the same time, I don't know, man. But hypothetically, if it is that, like if it is, let's just say above PS4 or around there, yeah, that'd be fine. I mean, if you want to keep costs down, um, that'd be the biggest thing is like the battery life. I mean, like the Asus ROG Ally, like I've seen people play that system. And it's a very powerful system, but there's no battery life. Like it's no battery life. G games literally last like an hour like some games like it depending on what you have like there's no uh, oled obviously they're trying to cut down on costs mm -hmm. um you know so it's just these these powerful hybrids that are coming out i don't i don't know how well thought out they are like I, I i don't know like me looking at them um because the battery life is just not acceptable right now you know it's, it's just even steam deck it's acceptable but it's not great and steam deck's better than a lot of these other places in, in battery life. So, so yeah, man. Um, yeah, I mean, and the other thing, one one last point, you know, Pokemon Company is gonna want a light model down the line where it's just a handheld, cheaper, yeah. Yeah. When, when when they get Pokemon out. Um, so, like, you know, Pokemon Company is gonna be Nintendo Zier to make sure that they get the specs that they want. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, shout outs to Juice Man Vaughn with the five dollars. Says, man, let's keep it real. Final Fantasy doesn't have the juice like that anymore. Okay, so we can spend a little bit of time on this because there's not as many topics for this week, just because it's been a little bit of a. It was a little bit of a recovery week after that. After I OJ loses his voice yelling at Super Mario RPG. Um, so Final Fantasy, it's like I said, it, it it seems like it doesn't have that type of juice anymore with it, right? It seems that way in Japan. Um, worldwide, we're going to have to wait and see. But I do want to pose one question to you, Stuff, and we talked about this. Now that we have these sales numbers that have kind of came out, you know, and obviously Spider-Man is later. I think Final Fantasy has an opportunity to sell better later. But man, I'm looking at that Rebirth, dude, and I'm thinking, is Rebirth going to hinder it a little bit? I look at it more and I'm thinking, ugh. We'll see, I guess. But what are your thoughts? Do you have any different thoughts now that you know, like, the opening week sales? Like, do you still think Rebirth can come in and kind of say, well, no, this is the Final Fantasy that we want to play? Yeah, I mean, honestly, it's the Final Fantasy that appeals to me more just because of the battle system. But, you know, it's also a sequel. Um, and, and sequels sometimes can have a hard time selling more. Um, you know, I think most people would agree Final Fantasy VII Remake sold really well. Um, you know, the I think the last we heard was like five million units, but it, it sold more than that now. But I, I don't think it it didn't underperform. But given the hype and yeah. the expectation and the desire for a remake for years and years, de de actually decade, decades, <laughs> you, you, you'd think it would have sold better than Final Fantasy 15, even though it was only on PS4 or, or get, get closer. But it really didn't. And many people have mentioned that the sales for Final Fantasy VII Remake were really front-loaded, and then it kind of just tailed off. Yeah. Um, until you know, until of... Intergrade came. Intergrade came out and gave it a little bit yeah. of, a, of a bump. Yeah. So I, I think Rebirth will do well, but it's a sequel. Um, yeah. That makes it tougher. I mean, I think it's gonna do fine, but is it gonna break records when Final Fantasy VII Remake didn't? Probably not. Mm, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll see with that. So, yeah, that's going to be interesting to see exactly how well that does. But, yeah, I, I was like, yo, Final Fantasy VII Remake, that's going to sell like 10 million because it's like the PS4 has 110 yeah. million units and it was so hyped and Cloud was like, I I, I was like, yo, this is going to blow up. I thought PS4 sales were going to blow up to like 200,000 plus you know, I was completely wrong with my analysis on that game. Like, I th and I think everybody was a little bit shocked that it didn't do better. I think, like, I know, I remember Dreamcast guy was saying, that, you know, like, hey, he was shocked that it didn't sell 10 million. I think everybody was. I remember after the Spawncast, we discussed it. We all thought that it was going to do, like, crazy. Like, you know, it was going to be million plus in Japan right there at launch. Um, but it just didn't. It just didn't. So, um, I don't know. Yeah, we'll, we'll see how Rebirth is, man. We'll, we'll, see how Re we'll see how Rebirth does. 
um, going forward. Um, all right, so let's go and let's move on to the next topic here, guys. And um, shout outs to everybody who's supporting the stream. Thank you so much, Juice Man Vaughn. Thank you for the five, Alvin. Thank you for the um, the the message. Or sorry, thank you for the um, the membership. Uh, if you want to get your question answered, we do have. Um, if you're a member, if you go on the Discord, there is um, a Player Essence Cross Nintendo question page on the sidebar. You can uh, ask a question there. Um, so yeah, you can definitely ask a question there or on our latest post on Patreon. Uh, you can also ask a question on there too um, for members, members only um, for that on, on Patreon. So awesome stuff. Um, all right. So next topic here, guys. We're going to talk a little bit about the game of the year, Front Runners. Then we're going to move on to a different topic. So stealth, man. Uh, game of the year, Front Runners. We're looking at quite a number of different games that have came out this year. What would you say are your Front Runners for game of the year right now? Yeah, so, you know, I'll, I'll first caveat it with saying that my candidates are very different than probably what, like, the mainstream picks would be, just because I, I don't play a lot of those games. But, um, you know, Tears of the Kingdom is a clear number one for me right now. Um, you know, it was just so good. It, just overwhelming. It, I mean, in many ways, it was overwhelming. Just the amount of exploration and just stuff you can do. I still haven't... I, I put... 200 plus hours into it i am i still haven't done all the side quests um i don't know if i ever will you know i, I, I want to give it some time now that i'm that i finished the main story but that's number one you know it was everything i wanted a breath of the wild sequel to be um number two for me would be octopath traveler 2 um you know that game just resonated with me and you know just like the visual style and the gameplay and the story and the music, it all just really resonated with me, um, you know, in, in a big, big way. Um, number three, I, I think would probably be Final Fantasy 16. Um, you know, I'm still not crazy about, you know, the, 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 the combat system that they chose. Um, you know, the fact that you only control one character, not a huge fan of that. But, you know, the story and the characters and the music are all just top notch. Um, that's really good. And then, um, you know, Le the Legend of Heroes Trails to Azure mm. um, that, that came out in March. I think it came out in March. Um, very, very good. D a more traditional RPG. That's kind of my style. Um, re I really like that. Now there's another Legend of Heroes game coming out in a week. Um, you know, very, very soon. Um, but those would probably be my front runners. Front runners. You know, I liked. I really, I really liked. Um, Fire Emblem Engage, but I wouldn't put it in the, in the, in the stratosphere of those other games that I mentioned. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. Those are all really good picks. I, I do like some of those RPG picks. I wish I had more time to get into the, like the Legend of Heroes games because I like I know they're so good. You would love them. You would yeah, love I, them. I play them, but then I don't. <laughs> I buy them, and then I'm just like, there's so much that I gotta go back and. Oh my god, those are such good games. Too. I have yeah. them all, man. I, I actually, either they either send me them or I buy them. You know, so. Uh, for me, I, I think that's going to be one of my New Year's resolutions uh, coming up is to make yeah. sure or whenever there's a spot, I can play more of those. Man, I need I really need to get into those. Uh, but I for mean, me, in, in, in general, they're just good to collect. Because yes. NIS yes. America does limited print runs for them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's already tough to get some of the games I just released a couple of years ago. Um, so, yeah, I, I, you would love it, I think. Yeah, um, I do like what yeah. I've played, like from the ones that I've played, I thought they were pretty good. Um, yeah. I do want to mention for me, like Resident Evil 4 Remake is still shining through. Um, I went back a little bit just because I was doing one little video project I thought I was going to do with Resident Evil 4, but I never ended up doing it. But I went back and I played it again a couple weeks ago, and man, it is fun, dude. Like Resident Evil 4 Remake is so good. So for me, definitely one of the top front runners for me. Fire Emblem Engage, I think I liked it a little bit more than you liked it. That's definitely one of my front runners as well, just for me personally, not talk about Keeley yeah. Awards. I did a video talk about Keeley Awards and all that, but just for me personally, Fire Emblem Engage, I really like it quite a bit. Um, some issues here and there, but overall, I thought it was really fun. Um, I spent 100, and, 100 hours plus in there, so um, definitely liked it. Um, and then, um, obviously, Tears of the Kingdom. I think that's probably like my top right now. It's like Tears of the Kingdom is my favorite game so far of the year. And then I'm still playing through Final Fantasy 16, but 
goodness gracious i agree with you with the whole you can't if they want to just let you control one more character i, I don't know why they don't let you control a different character <laughs> like it would be really cool to control sid or torgal like it would be really really yeah. really cool to con especially sid um this is quite, quite possibly the best version of sid ever um i always just saw him as like he's a cool character he's really crafty and engineering you know in the previous games but he never really stole the show like this Sid steals the show you know so uh so yeah it would have been nice but yeah it is what it is whatever um so uh so for me those are kind of like the top my yeah. top three that are in serious con or sorry did i say top four that are in serious contention right now for my game of the year uh we still need to wait and see obviously there's going to be new super mario bros wonder Super Mario RPG. I don't know no, if you're going to count that. Don't, you just said new Super Mario Brothers Wonder. Oh, sorry. Don't, don't say new. You're going to get in say, trouble. Yeah, I'm going to get in big trouble because obviously it's not a new Super Mario Bros. game. The new Super Mario Bro yeah. Brothers game, Super Mario Bros. Wonder. <laughs> Super Mario Bros. Wonder. New Super Mario Bros. game, which is Super Mario Bros. Wonder. Uh, I just got tongue tied there. Uh, so yeah, Super Mario Bros. Wonder. Uh, we got to see how that game turns out too. Yeah, and, and and I think you know the Super Mario RPG remake is gonna be high on a lot of Nintendo fans' lists. Yes. You know, yeah. Come the end of the year, and then Pikmin Four. Yeah. You know, people always underestimate Pikmin Four. They do. A main game has not reviewed lower than an 87 Metacritic. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's always critically acclaimed. Obviously, you know things can change, but based on the previews. Seems like people really like Pikmin 4. Um, yeah, yeah. And the demo, so the demo's Pikmin. good. Yeah. And, you know, I'm a big Spider-Man guy. I really love the original Spider-Man. That's probably, like, the biggest PS5 exclusive mm -hmm. that, you know, I'm waiting for. Um, but, yeah, it's just, it's just going to be hard for anything to just top Zelda this year um, for me, um, obviously. But it's just been a real good year for gaming. Like, I'm... Like, I, I tweeted about this, you know, after I finished Final Fantasy 16, I got to go back and play Advance Wars, which came out in April. Yeah. I still haven't played it yet because the Xenoblade DLC came out, then Zelda, then Final Fantasy. It's like, there's no time for any of this stuff. So, I, you know, um, I got to go back and play some stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Like, the, the Xenoblade DLC was just really good. <laughs> Man, yeah, I really I mean, enjoyed that. Yeah, and if there's like a best DLC for this year, it's Xenoblade. That's yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, if, if if I could put it in my game of the year, because I mean, I would definitely it'd be up there because it was really good. It was a solid. I think I put about almost fifty hours. It was yeah. a solid fifty hours of me just playing through. I mean, maybe that was me artificially stretching it out a bit, making sure that I did every single thing that I could possibly do before i beat the game that i mean obviously there's some stuff that you can't do because some of the your the level cap is too or the levels are too high with some of the monsters or some of the bosses but uh yeah. but yeah like most of the stuff i think i beat the game like at level what levels i at 70 70 something so i was pretty high it was a pretty high level so it, it was fun it was a lot of fun and you know a dark horse kind of game of the year for me is um is a uh, dragon quest monster the dark prince mm-hmm um, you know, I, I really like Dragon Quest IV. It's one of my favorite RPGs of all time. And this is basically a prequel to that. Um, you know, 500 monsters right away. You know, it looks good. We haven't had a Dragon Quest monsters localized in many, many years. Um, so I'm, I'm really, really excited for that. And then obviously, you know, Star Ocean Remake. Um, yeah. you know, that, 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 that looks so good. I mean, it's basically a new game. Just, just the way it looks and how much they've added. So that's, you know... So some other games I'm looking forward to. I, I really hope with the Star Ocean remake that Square Enix is like, all right, we need to just take Star Ocean in a different direction. Yeah. <laughs> I, I really mean, hope I've that. Seen for, I've, I've seen more excitement for this remake than, than I ever did for Star Ocean 6. I, I've seen more excitement for this remake than like probably, I don't recall the last time there was a lot of excitement for Star yeah. Ocean. <laughs> I don't even remember. The, I mean, honestly, like, if you go all the way back to like, because... You gotta remember, like, Star Ocean 4, that was, people were kind of excited for that. Then it was like, oh, it's only on Xbox. So there wasn't as much hype for it, especially from that base at the time, you know, right? We're, we're, we're kind of developing the online, M4G is the place where everyone is going to talk. Twitter was not a thing at the, it was a thing, but it wasn't a thing at that time. You know, we're talking mid-2000s when the hype for that game was coming. So it was just 
message boards and people were complaining why isn't it on PS3 or you know whatever the case or where's a Wii version for some people why is it why is it only on Xbox so there wasn't as much hype for that and then it came out and it wasn't like it was a really weird game it was I, I found it okay but I know it's not a great game and there's some really fatal flaws because of like the three discs like your ship crash lands on disc three like if you got to go back you got to start swapping discs back and forth to go to certain planets it, it's it's there's just some other fundamental issues with the game until it came out on ps3 later which fixed those things um but uh and then star ocean 5 it always looked weird it, it, it i mean there was some cool stuff but it wasn't like it was high people were like okay we're waiting and then that game was terrible that game was terrible <laughs> i don't know did you play star ocean 5 uh, for a little while. Yeah. <laughs> That's what everyone says. Uh, for a little bit. That game was so bad, dude. I, I really hate that game. Not hate, hate, but I. it's really, it's not good. So this yeah. is probably the, and then Star Ocean 6 was coming. We're like, Square Enix is dropping like 17 games in like that last half of the year. So it was like, um, I think this is good. It looks better than Star Ocean 5. That's what everyone was saying. <laughs> I mean, but, it, it was better, but like, yeah. It was the game was still pretty mediocre in my opinion. Yeah. Um, you know, it wasn't anything special. And I don't even think it cracked like a million units sold. No, um, no. Otherwise, they would have said so. They would have. Oh, uh, they would have been jumping for joy. I, I, I fear yeah. for Triace though going forward. But I, I don't I know. If, I don't know if Tri like I don't understand why Triace continues like to push this like weird 3D models. Like they they want to make like a huge AAA RPG and they clearly don't have the budget. Um, they clearly don't have the budget. To, to make that but they they're insistent on it and i don't know why they don't make like a stylized you know yeah smaller scale but like stylized like um cell shaded or something like that like star ocean like maybe they don't want to take it in that direction but i think yeah. it needs to go in that direction like i think i mean to... i do too i mean i i pre-ordered the remake immediately as soon as i could mm -hmm. um and if they made a new star ocean that looked like that or you know had a little bit more old school flair like mm -hmm. i'd be 10 times as interested in that mm -hmm. yeah i i hope this because this could be the best selling star ocean game in quite some time so um i think star ocean 4 might have crossed a million if you combine the ps3 but i'm not sure i'm not 100 percent sure so um so yeah i i hope i hope so with this game because i think it's going to be really good it might it might make it into my game of the year um, Octopath Traveler 2 is also a really good game, you know, uh, that I really like. I still need to go through and beat some of the, some of the stuff, but I really like that game as well. So, yeah, so far, Front Runners Game of the Year, looking pretty good. Um, overall, I'm going to open up my Discord as well. So, if you guys, once again, if you guys have questions, feel free to, uh, tag us, um, or sorry, feel free to put us, uh, put those questions in the, uh, Discord as well, just because, uh, we'd love to get your, uh, questions answered and everything so uh we're gonna go to the next topic here guys uh we are moving along uh nintendo on the technical performance of the switch i don't know did you see this article um i did yeah okay so nintendo i mean obviously nintendo's gonna not say hey our product is lacking uh but there was an, a very interesting uh question so i'm gonna paraphrase it they were basically asked like hey you know the switch you know, it's, is it kind of lacking? It's not getting certain ports. What's going on here? And Nintendo was like, well, you know, uh, we don't, I don't think it's lacking, but developers always want more power. And uh, there's some restraints that actually create some cool gameplay ideas or some different things that you do with the game, um, you know, because of that. So essentially that's that was their, that was their answer, um, you know, because you can find different ways to overcome whatever you're trying to overcome. So uh, Stealth, what is your thoughts? Um, on what they had to say. Um, and do you feel like the end of the line is coming in for the Switch in terms of when they're going to announce something? Because these questions are starting to get brought up quite a bit. Like, multiple questions on Nintendo Switch 2. Like, hey, how are you going to like fix the scalping situation when that launches? Um, you know, uh, what are you planning? Like, backwards compatibility. What are you planning for that? Like, a lot of investors are now poking and prodding quite a bit. And they're having to answer some of these things. Uh, so, what are your thoughts on, I guess, all of it? Yeah, I mean, obviously Nintendo isn't going to badmouth their own system, especially after it sold 125 million units. Yeah. They still want to sell it. Um, so that was as much of a PC answer as they could say. It's <laughs> like, you know, yeah. like they're not going to badmouth it and say it's underpowered. They'll just release a successor and then yeah. start marking that, um, you know, so 
yeah, they're not surprised they 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 didn't say anything bad. Um, you know, in terms of when the next Switch is coming out, I mean, you know, I'll be. I think everyone, I think everyone would be shocked if we finish 2014 and we don't have a new Switch in our hands. You know, I, I think that would be very surprising for people. Obviously, the timeline within 2014 is you know open to debate. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think we're closer to it than we are farther away. Um, you know, especially given how old Switch is. I mean, it's selling good, but you know, sales peaked for it a while ago. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you know, it's still selling really good, um, but it's going down. So you know, it's something that Nintendo was clearly working on. Yeah, absolutely, man. Um, I look at it that way. Yeah, they're not going to badmouth their own system after they've sold 125 million units. Um, yeah. You know, and at the same time, it's like I think that they know that they probably they. I mean, obviously they have something that 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 they're still preparing and getting ready. Um, so I think that yeah, they're just saying hey, they're, they're giving the PC answer. Just like yeah. <laughs> I just always find it funny when people are like, why can't they just release something next? Like, well, why give this type of answer? What do you what do you want them to say? <laughs> yeah, you think they're gonna announce it? Oh, the best question in the, you know Q and A. They're gonna announce the next system. Yeah, to someone asked. It's not happening. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, I mean, honestly, I think everyone can pretty much agree that Switch got way more third-party ports and support than anyone thought, like, going into the Switch's first year. Like, obviously, Switch doesn't get everything, but it's gotten a good amount and some exclusives, too. So it, 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 it hasn't been, like, a drought. Like, I think I mentioned this. Like, I still have, like, 14 Switch games pre-ordered um, that are coming for, like, the rest of the year. So it's like there's still a good amount of software coming. Obviously, it's not getting everything, but, you know, it, that that was always the case for Switch. Um, but, yeah, Nintendo is not going to badmouth it. That's just not going to happen. Yeah, just like I, I also related to the Xbox Series S. Microsoft, like, developers are clearly, like, voicing some concerns, and Microsoft is going to be like, hey, guys, it's lacking. You know, they're going to be like, take care like make the game on there they don't, <laughs> they don't. Yeah. microsoft doesn't care because they know xbox series s sells so they're not gonna bad mouth their own system if anybody like because like they've been asked about it and they're just gonna be like they doubled down the xbox series s you know they made it a new model of it and because it's selling and obviously that's profitable for or they want people and it's all digital so obviously they, they love that uh because fans have no choice but to buy digitally um but yeah, man, um, it's just it's just it's just weird. It's a weird weird situation. Weird situation for sure. Um, but uh, yeah, with these investor meetings and all that, Nintendo usually gives pretty solid PC answers. Um, you know, the backwards compatibility stuff is interesting because they said that there's Nintendo accounts. The only I think the sole purpose for Nintendo account is for like your NSO apps and your games and your digital games. You know, so um, if they're carrying that over, then obviously to me that would signify yes, there's definitely going to be backwards compatibility. Um, but you know, we'll see. Uh, we, we will see <clears throat> on that. People talk about Metroid Prime as well. I see people in the comments talk about Metroid Prime. Metroid Prime is Metroid Prime Four. It's I, to me, it's a Switch and Switch Two game, or it's just going to be a late Switch game. So I don't think they're going to cancel it for the Switch. People keep on saying that they're going to cancel and just put it on Switch Two. I don't think so because uh, it's Metroid. Um, <laughs> I think they want it to sell. They want it to an install base, but we'll see. We will see. Um, all right, let's go ahead and get into some questions. And some questions, which should be fun. Um, round out the stream with that. Um, Dank Meme Center X with the first question says, What's your early projections for rank code and does it does it align with Astral Chain threshold for sales? Uh, my early predictions are not as high as Astral Chain. I don't think Astral Chain is like 1.3 million or something like that. 1.2, 1.3 million. I don't know if it's gonna be that high, but I do think that it has an opportunity to hit hit um, one million units sold. Uh, but I, I don't know if I'd go as high as Astral Chain. What about you, Stel? I don't think um, Raincoat has an opportunity to sell a million at all. Okay. Um, you know, one's an action game. Another is an adventure puzzle game. Very different genres with very different sales ceilings. Yeah. Um, you know, if we're, t if we're talking about Professor Layton or a new Ace Attorney, then sure, I would go a million. Um, but... You know, this is a new IP. Obviously, it's made from the Duncan Rampa team, but you know, honestly, I, I think if it sells like, you know, more than a couple hundred thousand, that 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 would be a success. Yeah. Um, 
you know, a million it, it, a million's a bit high yeah it, it, i mean visual novels are you know vi I, visual novel slash adventure games are popular on switch um but you know there's only so much that they can do um sales wise they're only so popular yeah yeah absolutely like, like, i feel like i'm one of the few people actually talking about raincoat at all um i actually saw omni who's a pretty popular uh yeah he YouTube, did. yeah he's he, youtube you know a uh, co commenter and uh he's actually streaming the game so uh yeah. that was interesting i was like oh snap i didn't know he was even into games like that so maybe it finds some weird niche and it can hit five hundred thousand units sold i think a million that would be like that would, they would be blown away with that but i'm yeah. thinking maybe the only way that maybe some price drops it's doing okay on amazon japan maybe there's something that kind of gets people to want to put something different yeah. in between there isn't a ton releasing right now at this point so we'll see how it does we'll see how it does but yeah maybe a million's a little bit too aggressive yeah and and the metacritic landed at about a 78 average which is which is pretty good so, oh was this um, okay so it went up yeah, it went up because there were, there were a lot more nines later in a ten. Oh, okay, yeah, I saw I saw it at a seventy three. Yeah, and then and then the rest of the reviews came out. Now it's at a seventy eight. Okay, yeah, that's actually that's actually pretty good. Going from yeah. se going from seventy three to seventy eight with ten more reviews that that's a that's a pretty nice bump. Yeah, so you know, re reviews. I mean, it's pretty good. I mean, it's it could have been higher, but you know, mm. it's not like so bad that people will, would avoid it. Um. You know, you know, I usually tweet about, you know, the, the review roundup I do, and it got way, way, way more attention than, than I thought it would. Mm -hmm. um, so I think there's some definite interest in this. Um, you know, obviously I have a physical edition pre-ordered. Unfortunately, I have it with Amazon, so I'm not gonna get it for like three weeks. <laughs> Um, which is annoying. Um, <laughs> Amazon, they just, uh, they just, uh, what was it? Sent me my front mission. I ordered, it was supposed, it got delayed like a million times. But, yeah, uh, I have not gotten my front mission yet. I think I'm getting it next week. I just got it. Shout out to the shout outs to the team over at Front Mission. I'm getting a uh, got a sponsored deal coming up with them. So let's go. <laughs> yeah. So at least one of those physical copies is coming for me um, because I pre-ordered it. I want to support that team. Um, but yeah, I, a, mi a million is too high. Yeah. That's just too high. Five hundred thousand. Let's let's try. Let's shoot yeah. for five hundred thousand. Hopefully. Um, next question comes from Luano. Um, it says, does the modern PlayStation fan actually view Final Fantasy as the must-play franchise? Old school, um, old school PS fans from the PS1 and PS2 still care, but what about the fans uh, that grew up with the PS3, PS4? PlayStation's modern exclusive lineup is very different now, and maybe Final Fantasy doesn't fit well as it once did. What do you think about that, Stealth? Do you think that the fans of yesteryear are still the same people? And that's the reason why maybe there's a little bit of a drop off in Final Fantasy, or it's not it's not galvanizing the base like Final Fantasy used to. I mean, I can tell you, it's like you know, I thought Final Fantasy 13 was okay. You know, I liked the battle system. I had fun with it. You know, if I was being honest and objective, it's not a great game. Final Fantasy 15, I don't think is a great game either. So you know, you're you're, you're kind of coming off two okay games. Um, so you gotta have to, have to, so I think they're kind of just building back up again to being thought of as one of the biggest, for, for, you know, a good time, and this is just my opinion, I, I haven't thought of Final Fantasy as one of the best JRPG series mm -hmm. in, in modern times. There's a lot of other JRPGs that, you know, are just better in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think, I, I, so I think it's gonna take time to kind of build up that, oh man, Final Fantasy is back and, you know, all these, every time it releases, it's gonna be amazing again. Um, I don't think people have felt that for, you know, a good while. So, um, you know, I owned a PS1, I owned a PS2, I owned a PS3, I owned an SNES, an NES, and, you know, I've been playing Final Fantasy from the beginning. Um, you know, obviously the battle system isn't to my personal taste, but I'm still playing it and I'm enjoying it. Yeah. Um, you know, so, you know, I think if the game is good, it, it'll get an audience. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Final Fantasy 16, uh, obviously that's, you know, um, it's it's got a good odd i mean three million it's got a good um, number of people playing and enjoying the game um you got a lot of stark hardcore fans that are defending the game which is good uh you want to have that fan base out there but it's good and it's bad uh when you get stuff like that because like when there's like actual critiques like hey it'd be cool if you can explore that area there they're like no it's fine the way that it is play something else you know it's like okay 
<laughs> or it's like, it'd be cool if you can control a different character. No, you know, we don't need to control a different character. I'm like, okay, that's fine too. Whatever. <laughs> so it is what it is. But uh, but yeah, man, I, I do think that I do think that a lot of the people that played old school RPGs that were in that base, I think that they've either are not existing anymore, that those people probably don't play games. I'm not sure if those people even play anymore or they moved over to the switch or i'm not sure what happened because there is a gap there is to me there is a clear gap after i saw just like i said skip the whole install base sales final fantasy you know what's good what skip all that i'm talking about just simply galvanizing people to go pick up the system you know i, I did not see that with final fantasy 16 like i'm not i mean we'll see how june is for the mpd right so maybe that ps5 gets a huge boost because of final fantasy um but in japan it's just not there like launch week not even over 100k for th that's unheard of for final for mainline final fantasy that's unheard of like maybe if you i don't know what like when final fantasy 13 launched what the ps3 sold i don't remember um but most of the time you see a big bump i know with the ps4 you saw 118,000 units you know fly off the store shelves like that is really pushing people to go out there and buy the game uh maybe final fantasy 15 was the super overhyped you know um but final fantasy used to always rush like people would rush out to go get the system in japan and i'm not seeing that anymore so maybe uh maybe there is an issue maybe those people aren't there um yeah and people joke that you know the launch of final fantasy 16 boosted switch sales <laughs> um, because that's you know because you know honestly it's, it's also unheard of for you know a six-year-old system to sell over 100k with yeah. not even a new release out um just pretty much based off the hype of a direct yeah um you know it, it just keeps selling and selling like that's the impressive story to me is what switch is doing mm -hmm. um, but yeah i mean i definitely you know in japan it's tough you know it, it's, it's it's honestly tough um you know i'm curious to see what square enix does with dragon quest you know you you can't skip a nintendo system for dragon quest you just can't mm -hmm. um it would be even it like I mean, dragon quest would sell well but again it would sell the lowest of any dragon quest game you know if it's not on switch or you know switch 2. Mm -hmm. uh, so it'll be interesting to see what what they do for that yeah, absolutely. But yeah, I mean, I think even, like, you know, Dragon Quest Monsters has the potential to sell, like, in the ballpark at launch of, of what Final Fantasy 16 did in mm, Japan. Mm, yeah, oh, absolutely. I think Dragon Quest Monsters could be, it might sell above it. Because, like, Dragon Quest Treasures, what did, let me look up what Dragon Quest Treasures did. Dragon Quest uh, Treasures, uh, uh, that's Famitsu. Fantasy sales. Um, let me look up that real quick. Um, so yeah, that was back in the very December last year. Yeah, I think it did. Uh, it did. I think it did almost two hundred thousand units. Yeah. Yeah. And this, and and, and, they're, and they're they're both spinoffs, but Dragon Quest Monsters obviously has a name. Mm -hmm. um, you know that people recognize, and it's oh, very similar to Pokemon. My bad. One hundred and forty-three thousand units for Dragon Quest Treasures at launch. Physical, yeah. Yeah, physical. So physical, probably two hundred thousand. Um, yeah. So they'll probably do better. Be big. Yeah, I think Monsters will be. It, it, it'll, 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 it'll clear two hundred thousand. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, shout out to J Two Blue with the five dollar donation. Appreciate that J Two Blue, and he says, um, "You know, Star Ocean Two is hype when RGT eighty five is excited for it." <laughs> <laughs> RPG 85 is he actually excited for that I, I mean we'll see we'll see <laughs> we'll see when it comes out but yeah I mean it looks good I mean it's old school you know with the new coat of paint uh thank you to J2 Blue man thank you for the donation I appreciate that I mean, um, I mean, I mean, I mean the, the best part of that game is it's definitively the best version of it yeah. already we know it is mm -hmm. because they're including all the content there's quality of life stuff so like you know, we could just be excited about it because we already know it's going to be the best version of the game. Like, I didn't think twice about pre-ordering it. Mm -hmm. um, it was just instant, which is great. It was, just, it was an instant, this is quality. Whenever you yeah. see Star Ocean, it's a, it's like a, oh, Star Ocean. It's like, a, oh, okay, we'll see. <laughs> it's like, oh, Star Ocean, cool, right? Yeah. I think, maybe, we'll see. <laughs> this one seems like, oh, snap, it was like, oh, this looks good. Like, a lot of us that have been playing RPGs, you can, like, almost immediately tell an rpg like if it's going to be really good or not 
you know, when you first see it, like, you know, and Star Ocean is not one of those RPGs where you say, oh, that looks really good at the beginning. <laughs> at least for me. I, when, I, when, I, when I first saw Star Ocean the Divine Force, I was like, okay, you know, maybe, maybe it's good. Better than Star Ocean 5, but we'll see. This one, I was like instantly, oh, like, but, 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 like when, um, when Star Ocean was leaked, I was just like, oh, okay, yeah, Star Ocean, it's leaked. <laughs> I didn't even cover it. <laughs> I didn't even cover it right away. I waited a bit. I'm like, hey, yeah, guys, they leaked the title. Because I wasn't expecting much, you know? I was I was like, oh, okay, you know? Uh, but, yeah, man. That's all good. It's all good. Uh, let me let me go ahead and get to this next question here. Um, Monado Mario. Remember, if you guys um, are on the Discord, if you want a question um, answered, go to the sidebar, PE uh, Cross Nintendo Questions, and I will answer it on there. Um, uh, yeah, awesome stuff. Or, of course, drop a donation, put your question in there. I will answer the question there or read off your comment as well. Um, Monado Mario says, uh, Do you think Xenoblade might one day eventually replace Final Fantasy, becoming the most well-known JRPG in Japan? Um, I don't... They'd have to do something... They'd have to do something drastic. You know, like this next Xenoblade or whatever they do next. I think the next game is going to be a... A form or a different version of Xenoblade something. Maybe it's not called Chronicles, but maybe it's called something else. But there would need to be some type of shift or change that really pushes the base. Like I, I don't know where it happened with like uh Souls games. Maybe it was uh Dark Souls that did it, or maybe I think maybe Dark Souls 3 that really that sold 10 million overall, but there would need to be some type of shift or change or something that really pushes people. Or really pushes more like people playing the game for it to do that. That that'd be tough, and they would need time because Final Fantasy is almost Final Fantasy is almost forty years old. It's going on, it'll be forty in a number of years. So, um, uh, so yeah, it might be tough. What do you? Yeah, think, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't see it either. Um, you know, obviously Xenoblade Chronicles Three, it did great, but you know, and we've talked about this. You know, selling a third game is tough. Yeah. Um, they have an opportunity now if they start something brand new mm -hmm. and it looks amazing mm -hmm. and they could be like, hey, you know, from the makers of Xenoblade Chronicles. Yeah. Then that'll drum up excitement and interest. And so it all depends on what that next game is. Yeah. Um, you know, will it ever be more popular than Final Fantasy? I, I don't think so. Um, but I don't think they need it to be. Yeah. You know? they, yeah. Yeah. They don't really need it to be, but w what they can do, like the, the opportunity is there. Uh, like it's almost like Final Fantasy might be like in a weakened state, you know, a little yeah. bit. And the Switch, obviously, whenever the next Switch comes out, it's going to pass up the, the, the PS5 quickly. Like I don't think it's going to take too long for it to beat it out in Japan. Um, so they have an opportunity to bring out something to the market, but I think that they would need to rethink, you know, their HUD, you know, rethink kind of a little bit what they're doing, like with the gameplay. Just rethink it. They can still include all the cool things that make a monolith soft game a monolith soft game. You know, um, but yeah. I mean, a, a lot of streamers that I know, in in, in the run up to Xenoblade Chronicles Three, they streamed the entire series for the first time. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of streamers did. They, mm -hmm. they, they, they just skipped it until now because mm -hmm. Xenoblade Chronicles Three looks so good. Mm -hmm. You know, a, a lot of streamers are going to be on board with Monolith Soft's next game automatically yeah um just because now they're they're uh, up they're up to speed um but yeah I, I can't wait to see like what they're working on and, next and i think that out of all of nintendo's developers monolith soft might take advantage of the new hardware the, like they might be like we need new hardware the most right based off of what they do their type of games um yeah so yeah man I, i'm i'm excited to see uh i'm excited to see what what they do uh, what they do next man um with with uh with that but yeah i don't know if it's going to be able to uh beat out uh, final fantasy because final fantasy it's tough it's tough um all right let's see here um next question is from luano and he says um are atlas really going to say no to money and not put persona 3 remake on switch what do you think i think we talked about this a little bit last week or the week before or i don't remember yeah they did it before with, with soul hackers too and that game yeah. underperformed yeah, and you know, I, I honestly like maybe this is a bold prediction. I do think Persona Three Reload is prob might underperform, um, just just because this is the fourth version yeah. of of Persona Three. Um, so already people are like, oh, you know what? I already have it. I'm not sure. 
you get a, you get a, a few of those people. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and then not putting it on Switch in Japan. I mean, it's it can only do so good. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, that that like I, I have a feeling that 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 could be another underperform, like at least in the eyes of Atlas. Yeah, you know, it can absolutely be an underperform because it's not because the game will be bad or anything. It's just because yeah. they've already re-released the game multiple times. Like they just released Persona Three, you know, and it has less content. Like we're seeing with remakes that they're just not performing up to where you think they would like resident evil 4 remake that's gonna sell like 7 million right no it's not you know like not right away uh you know so this is the same situation that's going on with persona 3 i think that it's been re-released so many times people have been able to play it um but yeah it looks good though the remake looks good and uh if they skip out on it then they skip out on it i mean that's their decision uh, maybe the the budget for them is not that big of a deal maybe they just feel like oh we don't want to take the time to make it on there maybe they think that they covered that money with the game pass deal i mean if microsoft gave them a super bag they're like hey we can just get this money up front right so maybe it covers whatever the switch version was going to do um, if microsoft gives them you know 30 million dollars or whatever the case is like i don't know how much they're giving them they're giving them a lot though it's, i don't think it's a little bit so um so yeah maybe that that's it right there but yeah we'll have to wait and see um in terms of exactly how it actually ends up turning out um so. and you know we we do have one more nintendo direct probably in september so it's not 100 percent over yet mm -hmm. um you know we could still show up in that direct um so i wouldn't yeah I, I, I don't know i mean do you think it's possible for like a switch 2 situation as well yeah, definitely. Um, it could be one of the first ports if it gets, but um, yeah, I mean, if, if, if that's the decision Atlas wants to make, then and that's what it's going to be. Um, you know, Soul Hackers 2, really, I think it kind of was embarrassing for Atlas because they, they, they kind of touted it as this, like, third pillar RPG, and then it clearly was not. Um, and yeah, it just was not good. Um, so, I mean, I think Persona 3 Reload is good, but, you know, again, it's the fourth version. So, it, it, it's... T and, and you already just released a version earlier this year. So, it's like, how much Persona 3 are people going to buy? Um, you know, I'll get it, but, like, is just the regular person going to get it? I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how it actually ends up working out. Um, all right, I think we are actually through with questions all the way through there um we will take just a few uh we're about an hour in i'd like to go for maybe about an hour 15 or so so we will take some questions from the chat so if you guys want to tag me at player essence hashtag players if you got a question for me or stealth we will take questions from the chat as well this week uh, we don't have as many questions on discord but once again if you are a part of the discord you can uh get those questions answered um okay so ban i or sorry dank beam center has another one here and tag us in the chat if you want some questions answered, and we'll answer a few before we go um dank beam center says do you see bandai porting scarlet nexus or tales of a rise over um i think they they will at some point i actually heard about uh tales of a rise uh but i don't know if it's going to come to switch or the next gen switch i'm not sure what's going on but i heard a little bit ago that it's called uh sorry tales of a rise they're looking at porting that over yeah, I mean, Namco has a big showcase this weekend um, at Anime Expo where they're going to announce some games. Um, wouldn't surprise me. I mean, I, I, I'm hoping, like, Tales of Arise could show up. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I think we'll get maybe one port in that anime, you know, a a anime expo, you know, showcase. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's possible yeah absolutely um absolutely i think it's definitely possible we'll see i mean we'll it'll probably be for switch 2 stuff that's what i'm guessing but you never know right we'll we'll see scarlet nexus i'm not really sure they got a game pass deal for that game so i think bag is secured uh for that game so not sure if they care or not and maybe they're working on the next scarlet nexus um i think it did okay enough um so yeah um well, we we will see uh, Focus on me says Naruto game release date maybe since we know uh, about it at the Bandai presentation. Okay, so yeah, the Naruto connections. Uh, yeah. Game. Yeah. We'll see. Um, McNair X says question. Um, are there any updated information about FF9 remake? Do you think will it will be multiplied despite the original being PSX? Um, 
Uh, do you think we'll see it at TGS? Uh, it's possible for all of that. Um, there hasn't been anything new outside of just rumors. That's it. There's not been any actual official information. Um, but yeah, we could see it maybe announced. I think they want to give it some time before, you know, or because Final Fantasy 16 just launched. So uh, think we're, do you think that we're going to see that anytime soon still? Not until after Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, which is also early 2024. So once that's clear, um, <laughs> maybe. Twenty twenty. So it's going to be after 2024 they talk about it? I think so. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that, that's that's a while. That, that's that's going to be a while. Um, Ronnie, with the uh, with the question says, uh, do you think Bandai will port One Piece Odyssey to Switch? I don't think so. I don't think that game did very well. I don't know how I, I don't know how well the game did. More like it. I don't know how well the game did. Yeah, I mean it's possible. Um, they did port DBZ Kakarot yeah, late. They did. Um, but yeah, I, I don't. I don't know if like Namco announced sales for it, which usually isn't like the best sign. Yeah, if they don't announce sales, if they don't say one million sold and whatever, yeah, like it's usually ooh, things aren't going so well. <laughs> so, uh, Mr. Davis has, a, or actually, uh, Mit, uh, Mild God has a question. Do you think they would announce Xenosaga porn on the Bandai Namco showcase or direct? Ah, no, I don't think that they would. If it's nah. true, if it's real, I don't think so. Nah, if it's real, Nintendo, Nintendo would want that for the direct. Direct, yeah, that would be like a direct game. Cause like, yeah, because, like, Bots and Kaitos is a direct Yeah, because I think it would be exclusive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, Nintendo would want that. Yeah, absolutely. Um,. Next up is from uh, Mr. Davis says, I got a question date. Oof, Mr. Davis, I, 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 <laughs> I'm struggling. Can you rewrite that man or somebody in the chat decipher Mr. Davis's comment for me and we'll move on to the next question. Uh, why does Microsoft make consoles and not just focus on PC side with Game Pass? Um, because they're allowed to make consoles. I, I know originally Microsoft even, the only reason why Microsoft got into the console business was because they felt that Sony was going unchallenged and was a threat to Windows. So that's the main reason why Microsoft even got into the whole business, because they just saw Sony bodying Nintendo in the home console business with the N64 and with the, with the uh, or sorry, with the PS1 and with the PS2. They're like, wait a minute, hold up here. They're gonna go unchecked, you know? Uh, so that's the reason why they got in. So I think at this point, it's just to continue on with that. Like they just don't want anybody, you know, um, dominating the industry in that type of way sony dominating the industry in that type of way because sony does other stuff too right so so yeah um ronnie says uh thoughts on former rare dev saying that there isn't an audience for a new banjo game hmm, what do you think about that stuff is there is there an audience for a new banjo game um didn't super mario odyssey sell 25 million units <laughs> No, it didn't. It sold 26 million. Yeah. Oh, no. 26 million. <laughs> I don't know. I, would, it is, I know 25 or 26 million. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, of course there's an audience for a new banjo if it's good. Yeah. You know, that that's the thing. I think that's what they're scared of is I don't know if Rare is capable of making a game that good. Yeah. Um, well, maybe know, they, they are, but it, it, would, it, would take like six, it would take like six years. Yeah, and they have Everwild, <laughs> which I think like was in development hell, and who knows what's going on with that. Yeah. You know, yeah, I mean, I, a new banjo would be amazing. If it was handled right, um, it would sell great, I think. Um, but yeah, that's that that that's him saying that like Rare couldn't pull it off, which okay. I don't think they could. Got it. Um, Dank Beam. Okay, they they deciphered Mr. Davis's comments. They said that he thinks that maybe we get uh, Final Fantasy uh, Rebirth or Final Fantasy 16 on the Switch too. No, I don't think so. I think that they have exclusive deals no. with with Sony. Yeah, I mean, I see. I see. That's like asking for Bayonetta two and three on PlayStation Five. Yeah, you know, there, there's certain games that are just paid for, and I think those are two of them. Yeah, uh, Vito says the only Final Fantasy game played and loved with FF7. Do you think my next FF game should be? What do you think your next FF game should be? I mean, you should just go with Final Fantasy VIII and or Final Fantasy IX. Just go with the. If you like Final Fantasy VII, just continue on. I mean, I don't think that's too hard. If you like seven, just try eight. You know, so. Uh, and there's a remaster of eight on all systems, so just try that. Um. All right, uh, let's see here. Let me see if I missed any uh, questions here. I think I pretty much got everything for the most part. I don't think that there's any more um, questions here. 
Uh, all right, so we are going to wrap it up there. That was a nice, nice show. Hour, hour plus. Um, so stealth, man. Um, where can everyone find you at, man? As usual, you can find me on Twitter at stealth forty k. Um, you know, happy to talk about you know gaming. Yeah, absolutely. And um, for myself, uh, I had a video where everyone hated. Not everyone, but I had a video. Uh, only eighty six percent like to dislike ratio that's pretty low for me i got 87 dislikes i'm usually like in i average usually like in the in like the mid 90s you know so uh go watch my video that people really hated essentially um <laughs> go watch that video um i will be back tomorrow uh for the spawncast pre-show um spawncast pre-show it's it's a it's a not a uh, live show john's at the beach this week so we might get shirtless john again um buff shirtless john this week so look out for that on twitter um but yeah there will be an edited show like a recorded i wasn't able to go on that show this past week but i will have a spawn cast pre-show um i will have that tomorrow so uh, you guys can look out for that um there will be a video i think maybe maybe not i think i'm just gonna relax and maybe play some final fantasy or something like that um but there might be a video tomorrow there might not be um it's getting incredibly hot where i live so i have to wake up super early to exercise Otherwise, I'll be roasted, um, and I don't feel like going driving to the gym. So, um, so all right, guys. Thank you so much for watching today. Shout out to Stealth. Thank you for uh, coming on and dealing with my shenanigans earlier. <laughs> I appreciate that. And uh, we will be back, of course, once again next week. Um, so hit the like button before you go. And uh, we will see you guys uh, later. Thanks for coming out to the stream. Bye, everybody. See ya.